Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. The U.S. Air Force has produced some of the most advanced jet planes in the military history. To ensure the smooth running of these aircraft, it is imperative that their engines are carefully tested. One such aircraft is the B-1 Lancer produced by Rockwell. The original B-1A was to fulfill the role of a supersonic, long-range, low-flying heavy bomber. It had advanced features that included variable swept wings and variable air intake and exhaust capabilities. An early test flight resulted in the plane losing control due to becoming unbalanced during fuel transfer management. Other setbacks meant the B-1 nearly didn't make it through the production due to resistance from the top levels of U.S. government. However, the aircraft was finally given a second chance and evolved into the B-1B. Maintenance of the B-1B is crucial to its successful operation. Highly trained crews with different specialties perform thousands of hours of complex work to keep B-1 in top condition. After every mission or test flight, Maintainers will spend roughly 150 hours closely examining the aircraft and addressing any problems they might come across. That's about three to four times more than any other platform in the Air Force. From the moment B-1B lands, the pilots are queried on any issues or concerns during the flight. A complete post-flight inspection is carried out by crews walking underneath the bomber to check for any anomaly. To ensure optimal performance, the B-1B must have its engines thoroughly tested. Its performance in full throttle can only be tested in the Hush House facility. An enclosed, noise suppression facility like this is needed to allow engineers to run the engines at their maximum capacity to simulate real-world usage. The General Electric F-101 engine was specifically developed for the B-1 program, and over 469 of these engines have been built since 1983. During testing, the engine must be securely attached to a test stand. This is because it can produce over 30,000 pounds of thrust with afterburn. Once testing has proven the engine performance is up to standard, it is then reattached to the B-1 bomber. Another jet that regularly needs its engine maintained is the F-16 Fighting Falcon, with a top speed of 2.05 Mach. The F-16 is powered by a single turbofan engine, either General Electric F-110 or Pratt & Whitney F-100 that produces over 29,000 pounds of thrust. Most maintenance work can be carried out on this engine while still installed in the aircraft, but sometimes it must be completely removed for more serious repairs. One example of this is when the hydraulic line needs to be replaced. Maintainers must first remove all missiles and bombs before the engine can be pulled out. Removal takes over an hour, with the crew taking great care to ensure the engine is leveled to avoid the jet jumping up or down with the sudden shift in weight. For general maintenance and testing, as with previous aircraft, engines are tested inside a Hush House facility. 
The aviation mechanics must undergo years of training and supervision before becoming fully certified to carry out this work. With the engine under heavy load, engineers can check the strain, temperature, and thrust. To get the engine running, a hose is used to supply compressed air to turn the compressor section. The maintainer then controls the fuel flow and compares readings against currently known values. Additional fuel is injected into the hot exhaust gas flow when operating an afterburner. Maintainers then measure the exhaust gas temperature, or EGT, which is a parameter to determine the engine thrust. The maximum turbine inlet temperature on an F-16 engine is 2,750 degrees Fahrenheit for GE F-110 engine, or 2,460 degrees Fahrenheit for P&W engine, so any abnormalities can be readily identified. Engines aren't the only part that need to be carefully tested on an aircraft. Electronic warfare testing must also be carried out in specially designed facilities. Aircraft use sophisticated software to automatically detect and react to external threats. Much like a home computer, this software needs regular updates to maintain its effectiveness in combat. The defensive software suite of a B-1 Lancer is tested at the Benefield Anechoic Facility BAF, at Edwards Air Force Base, California. Here. Testing is carried out to check the responsiveness of the B-1 to various threat signals, including its ability to jam hostile radars in a dense electromagnetic environment. Thousands of pieces of RAM, radiation-absorbent material, are placed on all floors, ceilings, and walls to create the most desirable test environment. Compared to a flight test, this really helps keep costs down which means more resources are freed up for prolonged testing. This facility also provides a much cleaner RF radio frequency environment so that specific signals can be looked at and make sure the B-1 is responding correctly. Electronic warfare systems like this are vital to the successful running of any Air Force. The primary tactical jamming aircraft of the U.S. Navy, U.S. Air Force, and the U.S. Marine Corps was the EA-6B Prowler. It was equipped with the Raytheon Harm High-Speed Anti-Radiation Missile, AGM-88. This can be used against land and sea targets over 80 miles away, prime targets being defensive artillery and surface-to-air missile systems. The Prowler also carries up to five ALQ-99 pods located under the wings and fuselage. These jammers could operate over a wide range of overlapping frequency bands, including band 1, VHF, to band 10, KU, Each of the pods housed two powerful continuous wave CW transmitters that used beam steering to direct the jamming signal at the threat. The parameters of the jamming signal used were controlled by an exciter within the pod. Although the Prowler was not a very pretty aircraft to look at, it was an attack air crew's best friend that jammed enemy communications and gathered vital intelligence. After the Prowler retired in 2019 with zero losses, it was replaced with the EA-18G Growler, built upon the Super Hornet airframe. The Growler provides defensive and reconnaissance capability to the carrier strike group. It also provides escort jamming to strike aircraft to and from a target. The Growler has many advantages over its predecessor, including the addition of an APG-79 radar, which allows for advanced detection of surrounding threats. 
This radar can provide nearly instantaneous tracking updates and multi-targeting capabilities. It also combines the use of ALQ-99s with the wingtip-mounted ALQ-218s to create a complete defensive suite that can successfully jam and detect threats from the ground. Furthermore, the Growler is equipped with ALQ-227 Communications Countermeasure Set Electronic Attack Unit CCS -EAU, which intercepts signals and can also block enemy communications, a missing feature on the retired Prowler. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.